Hello folks and welcome to winter time in Pennsylvania. And I'm here with a seven and a half, seven and a half month old colt that we call Buddy. He's living the winter life. He's out. You can see he's covered in mud. And a fellow might bring him in and decide to groom him up a little bit. Really something I haven't done with him to amount to anything. And typically when I go to working on a horse, I like to tie him up. So I realized he hasn't been tied. So maybe a good thing to introduce here today is a first tying lesson. Let me say a couple things about the pre-flight preparation for this. First of all, if your horse is wound up, if he's nervous, if he's disrespectful, if he doesn't give to the halter, and this halter he's just about to grow out of, I'm, I'm noticing that right now, uh, probably if he's any of those things, it's not time to give this a try, but he's a pretty level-headed colt. Uh, what you want to be able to do, though, is you want to make sure that your horse has some respect for the halter. That when you move him around, he gives to it. That he's not going to lean on it. Then he's not going to try to run through it. And as usual, my program with these young horses is to check on them with binoculars every now and again. Let them grow up as horses. But I do enough that they soften up, so I want to be able to do things like this. So that's not threatening to him, and he's had that done a few times with him before. But uh, that kind of thing, you want to make sure you've got in place before you try to tie him up. You want to have him leading well. Some people use tying up to teach their horse to lead to get them softer. They pull back, they step forward, they learn. But a lot of bad things can happen, so I reverse that process. Rather than giving them the stress of tying up and having a possibly bad experience, I'm gonna teach them to lead first and then use that as the bridge to tying up. I'd like to be able to do this. I don't know what he'll do. He's never done this before, but let's see if we can take his head off to the side. See how he feels about that. He's trying to figure it out. Give him a second to stop moving his feet and to come over to me with his head. There you go. Thank you, buddy. So you want to bear in mind all the things that need to happen before the tying happen happens. And I think he's ready to go to that Again, if I had a perfect world, I'd have gone in the barn and got a, a little bit bigger halter, but this will work and he's used to it. So I like these tie rings. And maybe Kim can zero in on this. They're done by or made by a man named Ted Blocker. They're pretty familiar to a lot of people. They let you tie your horse up without tying them fast. They can pull some rope through. Now, if you didn't have one or you didn't want to invest in one, you can do this same process just by taking a half turn around a post like this. Then if he was to pull back a little, he could pull slack. And at first, I don't tie him. I just monitor the situation and keep the rope in my hand so that I can play it out or put resistance in it, as the case may be. So I've got a couple of brushes here. As you can see, that would not be a bad thing to do with him. So I'm just gonna go ahead and see how he wants to be. And if he would tie or fly back, I'd probably grab the end of that rope. But my goal is to have very little to show you folks today. In other words, I'd rather that nothing dramatic happens at all. That he didn't fly back, that he never really took the slack out of the rope. And frankly, 
Everything we've done with him has suggested to him that you don't want to take slack out of the rope, that if you do that, there's going to be an end point and you're going to have to give. And I think he respects that. So this may be another one of those videos where not a whole lot happens. And that seems to be my goal in life. And I'm fine with that. So we're just doing real life things with him. And I find that often that is better for a young horse than saying, here's a tying lesson. And you get out a flag and you get out a saddle pad and you get out a bag and a tarp. All of that's fine and I would do it later. But at first, I just want this to be a part of his life, to fit in to what he needs to do to get along. So then it happens kind of naturally or organically, you might say. Now that's a real good thing I want to do with him because I'm getting ready to maybe get his feet trimmed. And see, he got a little boo-boo there. Got a wrap of poly wire around his leg and took the slack out and had a little abrasion, then he stood and let us take it off. I'm not glad it happened, but I'm sure glad the way he reacted. Tells you a lot about what kind of pony he wants to be. So, doing these things with the young horse, especially one that hasn't been overly civilized, tells you a lot about your horse's personality. And so far, I'm getting all good signals. And typically somebody will say, well, come on, tell me the truth. How many times have you had him tied? Uh, this would be number one. Now, I've held him and done things, but I realized it was time and it's handier. So I've got him out here in the round pen. The ground is soft so that if he flies back or something, which I don't anticipate, He's got a good, safe, non-skid, unslippery surface here. Also, you'll notice that this rope is higher than his eye. Very hard for him to get a lot of leverage on that and pull hard. Uh, and it also is going to do him less damage to pull back with that higher. If you tied him, say, down here below his eye level, he could pull and injure his neck. But see, it's not hard to pull that through. And now he would have a whole lot of slack. So I'm gonna take that back to where we want it. But you can see that almost counterintuitively, this tie ring works by allowing them to get a little bit of slack. Because what happens when a horse starts to pull back is they escalate, they're worried, they panic. Horses by nature are panicky. So when they feel contained and can't get away, they lose it. But with this, they might get six inches of pull through. And in that time, that nanosecond, when that's pulling through, they have a chance to reconsider and to see they're really not trapped, but there's some resistance there. And most of them just say, oh, okay, I guess, I'm not gonna pull back and I'm not really in a trap. And they relax and you can go about your business. With him, we haven't even gotten to that stage. And at some point, inevitably, he will. And that's quite okay. I almost welcome it because testing this is probably a good thing for him. But because we're gonna have him gelded in about three weeks. I did want to handle him a bit more, getting to where he could tie up in case there's any follow-up care that I need to, to give him, just makes it easier. So, that's the way I teach a horse to tie up. Now, what am I not going to do with him? Well, something I'm not going to do with him is say, that was so good, I think I'll go up to the house and eat dinner and leave him here tied up. He doesn't need that, doesn't deserve that, doesn't have the attention span for that. So 
don't push the edge of the envelope until the envelope explodes. Keep going and quit on a successful note. Uh, if I was going to leave him here, which I'll do in a few more lessons, I would do it when I was right handy. Maybe not watching him all the time, but working around the barn or saddling another horse or one thing or another. And that would give me the ability to monitor him while he was learning some patience. But right now in his life, I really should only expect about this much patience. So that's the beginning. The other thing I think I've even mentioned in another video, with these young horses, when I tie them out the first time and leave them for a while, I'll hang a hay bag nice and high and safe next to them so that they have something to do besides eat the fence like he was starting to do or try to untie themselves. And I've found that just hanging a hay bag does more to discourage pawing and to teach them to relax and actually enjoy being tied up than almost anything else you could do. So that's a first lesson in tying. Uh, I wish I had been able to turn him upside down so it would make a better video and get more, more views, but failing that, this is how it goes. If you've got a young horse or an older horse that hasn't tied, or maybe who even has some problems with tying, use one of those rings or just flip your rope up over a post so that you can play out the, uh, the slack and restrain him a bit without having him tied fast and apply the, this whole idea of just giving him a chance to get used to it. I think you'll like the result. Tying is a good thing for horses, teaches them patience, teaches them some discipline, and gives you an easier way of working with them sometimes. So there you go. Hope it works for you. Until next time.